Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this Cosmographia Randall Carlson podcast, Grimerica show with Darren and Graham, and Brothers of the Serpent with Russ and Kyle, Swapcast Extravaganza for the holiday season. Darren and Graham, we're glad to be with you guys. This is, uh, this is our first time as the Cosmographia team Swapcasting and the live broadcast, so this is great. Thanks, guys. A couple of firsts. I, yeah, yeah, two firsts. That's Dingo great. All the way. That's right. So uh, we have a bunch of topics to talk about, and we're going to be doing, you know, standard Grimerica ramblings, I think, go wherever the conversation takes us. But the first thing I would like to talk about is upcoming trips and how the, let's talk about the Contact the Cabin events uh, and tell our listeners how all this got started and what we have coming up and how you guys, you know, what was the genesis of this whole project? I guess the genesis was like when Cyrus, I, I don't know if I should say his last name. I won't say his last name. When Cyrus, who actually is like the biggest Randall Carlson fan on the planet, possibly, he like, uh, he wanted to meet us real bad. And he just like out of the blue offered to rent this cabin. And I think, I mean, I'm pretty sure is like he got in trouble from his missus for renting this cabin with a bunch of <laughs> podcast internet weirdos. And it wasn't super cheap. I mean, it was like, you know, it was like nice cabin. We went there. It was like five star cabin in the woods. It's like five star hunting lodge for the weekend. And we did a bunch of podcasting. And I think we did like, we were, we were doing all these podcasts. Cause at the time we were going to do this, this, um, this like news sort of thing we were gonna call it like unaffiliated media group or some bullshit and it was like i'm I thank god we didn't because we would have been like stuck in the politics and everything like that but anyway we're doing we were recording episodes for this podcast that never happened and episode two uh, we called contact at the cabin because we were just looking for for episode names i think I think on the drive home, I think it might have been Michael or something like that because we were talking about contact in the desert or contact this, and and Michael's like, well, we had contact at the cabin. Or, so that ended up being an episode title for one of our podcasts that ended up in our black budget feed. And then the next year when we went to Seaside, we just called it sort of contact at the cabin. And uh, from there, it turned into like... A whole thing where we did one with Randall because we had, so that's a whole nother story of how. Well, that, yeah, that was we after met we met with Randall because Cyrus was such a big Randall fan. He called in. He was always trying to talk to Randall, <clears throat> and I think he he blew his load the first time he talked to Randall and couldn't even a ask a question. But it was on one of our. I think we had a call in show or something with him. He was first time, long time, and and I think that might have been after Randall came to stay at Darren's that time, and we went and traveled around BC. So we followed you guys around BC and, and that was kind of, I think also part of the genesis of this whole contact thing. Cause we had such a great time chatting with everybody and driving around and we thought we should do this on a regular basis. Was yeah, that, that was Darren, was that before that Darren, that must've been quite a bit before the, the first official contact. Yeah. Cabin. Yeah. That was before the official one because it was after that, that we went down there and met Brad and in Spokane. After that, we missed Randall by like yeah, three or right, four right. hours. Right. Yeah. But yeah, but, it was fifteen. We came up to Calgary, and you guys went down to Okotoks with us, and then into the BC Rockies there for a day, right? And then yeah. seven seventeen, a couple summers later, right when you guys. Yeah, that's right. I falls went down into the bottom of the canyon, the beneath the cataracts. There. Yep. Lost my hat. Yeah, I was just going to say, I was looking for the video of you uh, straining to look over the edge of the cliff there to see if you should run back to try to find your hat. Well, we, yeah, when we get back out there this spring, we will, we'll, we'll go down in there and we'll look for your hat. Oh, yeah, we can find it. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be pretty impressed if we found it. I think it's a tailor made one or, or a Titleist or something. It's red. It's really a nice hat. It was my red hat. Actually, it's pretty risky to wear a red hat down there. Yeah, these that days. was before they were in style. Yeah, that was before they were like you get hate or bad. for them. Yeah, or bad. So let me see. We what year was that then when we all sat in and we had the sort of the group podcast there in the studio? That would have been 2015. We had one when you guys came into town, and then we had one on the way out of town is when we sat in the garage till like right. two in the morning. Yeah. So that was five years ago already. I remember listening. Yeah. To see, while y'all were doing that, we were listening and we were like, man, 
Yeah. We need to start a podcast so we can also do this with all these guys. <laughs> and you know what's funny is we recorded we recorded Randall's ramblings in the garage without a podcast. And we were, we had all these right. dreams of just like, you know, editing it all up, but we still have it. But I don't think we did anything with never did all anything. the you know all the esoteric ramblings. But I mean we just chatted for hours. It was yeah. fantastic. Yeah, that was late know? night, no doubt. Yeah. Yep. So then the well, because we had to fly out at like four thirty in the morning. So oh, that's we, right. we, we like slept for an hour or something, and then got up, got up and packed, and left out of there in the dark. Yeah, when I woke up, you guys were all just gone, and it's pretty hard to leave at the dark in August in Calgary because it gets bright at like four a.m. So then the the yeah, contact at the cabin event that ha- that happened in Colorado, which was the most recent one uh, with Randall, Kyle, and I signed up for that. We signed up for like outdoor, the cheapest available tent spaces. <laughs> we were like, let's freaking go to this trip. <clears throat> and then, uh, and we didn't know any of you guys. And then the first Zoom conference that you hosted for, uh, for all the attendees, Kyle and I showed up and we asked a couple of questions. And then your event coordinator asked us to host the Zoom conferences from then on. And we were like, ah! <laughs> we didn't know anybody we didn't know darren and graham we didn't know randall or blad and this guy was just like hey you want to host these you know and we're like uh sure so that started that and then uh nope. we still hadn't met you guys didn't really know you until we went to the event but by that time uh you guys had asked us to just stay for the entire event so we did that we did a lot of driving scared the hell out of some people you know i'm a good driver i promise <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it was a great time. And during that period, we talked, Kyle and I talked to Randall and Brad about, and, and Darren and Graham about getting a, a podcast, a regular podcast going for Randall. So it was really cool how the whole, you know, the, the whole thing sort of had this genesis. Like we started it, a big part of starting our podcast was listening to you guys, the Grimerica guys. We listened to you for years. Yep. So it was, a, it was a huge, you know, uh, inspiration. We started our show. And then that led to us signing up for the trip of the contact of the cabin to go meet all of you guys. And then that led to us getting the podcast with Randall and, and Brad. And so here we are doing a swap cast. I think I heard a slightly different story. I think I heard you guys came into the Zoom call and insisted that you take it over. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you were like, you know. Yeah, well, it, it was this, clearly a coup. On the show. <laughs> Yeah, it was a coup. We completely took over. Yeah, <laughs> but I remember, I remember chatting with you guys one night late in, at the Real Contact at the Cabin in Colorado, and and just brainstorming about you know getting Randall out there and on a regular basis because we had those Zoom calls and everybody was joining in and it was a fantastic yeah vibe and momentum with all that. <clears throat> and we thought you know Randall Randall's got to have a regular sort of voice out there. And yes, <clears throat> we're kind of just trying to put. Everything That's right. together, and we were planning and it behind so, his back. <laughs> so happy that you guys came up with the cosmographia, and and uh, and it's still going. I mean, just... but yeah, and the first, I mean, the first time, my first ever Zoom was with you guys, um, right? When we were, you know, doing the the prep for the um, contact at the cabin in Southern yeah. Colorado, so we had a series of Zoom meetings, so all the participants could come on and get briefed about the goals and the itinerary and what we were going to be doing and so on. <clears throat> but at that time, I thought that you guys were all old friends. I just didn't know. I, I saw <laughs> Russ and Kyle. And I thought, okay, these are friends of Grimerica. Yeah, <laughs> you know, right. So I guess they're okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sneaky well, we move. Sure. That. We did so that slithering, <laughs> slithering their way in there. <laughs> slithering their way in there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking, oh, okay. Well, if Russ and Kyle know these guys, they they've got to be okay. Must be all right. <laughs> so, actually, it didn't take long for us to warm up to those guys. I mean, it was fantastic meeting you guys, and uh, I mean, right away, my girlfriend and I were like, those guys are cool, and I don't know, it just felt like uh, very Good comfortable fit. right away. Good stars fit. aligned. Yeah. yeah likewise. Yeah. yeah it was. Yeah, that that event was that. amazing. I'll never forget it. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. The Colorado event? Yes. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it, it, yeah, it was amazing. Yep. And everybody in the at the event, it was uh, very similar with everybody. You know, just uh, very instantaneous friendship. Connecting yeah, and it was cool, absolutely. too, because it was three groups total. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the first, and each group had their own very vibe. clear vibe, but all of them were awesome. You know, but oh, each yeah. group, there was the, each group was definitely different from the other ones, yeah. 
And it was, yep. but it was amazing. You know, the first group was just, they, you know, everybody was sort of meeting each other and then they left. And then the second group showed up and it's like, okay, we got to do this all over again. But they were just as cool, but completely different in a different way. It was amazing. I can't really, I don't really have the words to describe it. So well, part of the reason we're talking yeah. about all this is because we're planning future events. Well, the events, y'all, I mean, we hit the ground running when we got back. Yeah. And yeah, Darren, I mean, was like, Let's do more. B- blowing up all of our phones, like, <laughs> all right, I'm getting, I'm renting this, and we're booking this, and everything, and, and uh, we still really have shit rented. Course. It's just that we got this this shit going down, so we can't do anything. I mean, yeah, that's yeah. it. That's what I was getting at. We got yeah. shut down. So, but we're there's we, still big ones in the works. You know, we're yeah, still, we're still planning those out. You know, we started talking right away about different sites across the U.S. and places we want to go in Canada too. But then, uh, you know, the big big ones out in the middle of the Atlantic. There, we said Azores, Azores, and then we started talking uh, Scotland, Ireland, UK. So, yeah, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna oh, have a string the, of these here. We'll Gothic cathedral. Yeah, once you, you go on the grail tour. Well, yeah. So one of the tours we were. Um, talking about would be a grail tour where all of the sites that have some relevance to the grail stories. And that would actually have to be two tours because, um, you know, France can spend easily a week in France. No problem. No problem. And the UK, no problem a week there. So, you know, when you start looking at, uh, you know, the area down by Cornwall, when you look at Glastonbury, when you look at Roslyn Chapel, when you start looking at Avebury and all of the sites around England and British Isles, but then you go to France and you've got the cathedrals and you've got, um, you know, all that stuff in there that's associated with the, the you know, Ma, um, Chateau de Montreal. You've got uh, Rennes Le Chateau. You've got Lourdes. You've got, I mean, the list goes on and on. So um, that would be a very cool trip to do. Um, and, and, of course, with that, we'd have to immerse ourselves in the Grail stories before we actually go. Otherwise, there's a whole dimension missing. So that we'll have to see. When I don't know if that can happen in 2021, maybe. But then there's, uh, Brad said, the Azores. That would be the Atlantis trip. Yes. And uh, the Azores would be fabulous just by themselves without necessarily tying it in with the story. But like for that, the preparation would be everybody. We would study Plato's and read Plato's prologue to Tepeus and Critias to absorb 97% of everything that's been written about Atlantis, which came through Plato and what he described specifically. And if people wanted to know more about that, we should go to the first, what what was it, five episodes, four episodes of Cosmographia? Yeah, I think we did like a five-part oh, series on I think we did a five-part series. Three through nine. Yeah. Yeah, three oh, through six. nine on, on the whole, taking the whole, you know, a whole um, examination in depth of Plato's two dialogues and how they might relate to possibly Atlantis. And I made the, I made the argument that, If we start looking at all the details, there's one place that seems to be most consistent with the most details, with the least amount of fudging or changing or altering the narrative, and that would be the Azores. And I pretty much tried to lay out the case why that was. Um, But maybe chart a, um, you know, a a yacht? Yes. to cruise amongst the islands. Call up the yachts, Darren. <laughs> I've been uh, I've been actually window shopping cruise ships. All right, there we go. <laughs> but I'm like twenty million short. Can we? What's the maximum you can go fund me or kickstart or whatever? We'll do the the Randall Carlson cruise adventure of a lifetime. <laughs> Grimerica.ca slash support. Yeah, you just get on the boat and you never get off. This is it. It's a commitment. We'll have it. it's a commune boat. <laughs> All right. Because, I mean, let's be honest. These countries are going to shit. We might as well just hit the seas. That's right. You don't have, you don't have to be vaccinated or anything. You can just come on free love, you know. Yeah. Free, That's right. Free, free love. Ten love goes right to free love. <laughs> I'm thinking that you know, we should have a serious discussion about taking up piracy. 
Yes. Totally. Totally. I'm in. We're I'm bringing in. guns, a hundred percent. I mean, we'll, we'll 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 hash all this out on the seas. That's right. Once we hit international waters, I mean that. The tough thing about a contact at the cabin is it's a bit of a tug on your heartstrings. It's an emotional roller coaster. You go to these events, and it's kind of not like a regular conference. You know, you go there, and it's this sort of surreal thing. I mean, the one thing I might compare it to would be the paradigm, the early paradigm symposiums when we were going to that, and everyone was hanging out in the hotels, and you know, and the, those events before they went fucking totally sideways. Um, we're more about the after parties and the after hangouts and the hanging around the hotel, having a drink or smoking a joint and all that stuff than it was about the presentations. And and quickly, you know, that's what contacted the cabin almost sort of we, we embraced with that. And the problem with that is, I mean, especially when you do three in a row is, you know, you got to say goodbye three times. Yes, yeah. that was hard. It, yeah. It, yeah, it really is almost, a, you know, it's you know creating this community of like-minded people that to me is so um satisfying and to get to know all these new people and almost all of my really cool people and hang out with people like that for a week or two in these spectacular environments by the end of it you're good friends and then you know it's when you go back to normal life it is kind of a letdown some of the people i've met at these there was a lag these contact events have um you know, now I talk to them more than anyone else. In my, you know, they've quickly become some of my best friends or the people that I've met at these events. And it's just it's like Randall said, because you have so much in common when you get there that you just sort of, you have a lot to start with. There's ready-made conversations in all directions. Yeah, there's, there's no trouble starting up talking with anybody that's there. That's right. So, Randall, how did you decide on Cosmographia? The name. Well, cosmography is the, during the Renaissance times, cosmography was the kind of all-encompassing, you know, intellectual Sci- discipline. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, And it encompassed all the things that we're interested in, you know, geology and astronomy and geometry and cartography, maps, navigation, all of these kind of things were all under this umbrella. So the English version, if it starts with a C, we went back and, Use K because that was the original Greek spelling. Because it originally cosmos, graphia. You see, it's um, uh, so. Th- so that's kind of the, the whole idea. There was um, the um, sort of you know, kind of wanting to connect with a little bit of history, you know, in the stream of knowledge and 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 learning that has come down through the centuries. That we're kind of like allying ourselves with that. You know, we're allying ourselves with the the Galileos and the Keplers and the Tycho Brahe and the Leonardos and the Newtons and all of those incredible people that, you know, laid the, the scientific foundation for all the things that, you know, we're, the fact that we're sitting here having this Zoom conference right now, you know, because of the fact that there are satellites orbiting the Earth. And so, yeah, you know, it was kind of like an homage Allegedly. to that era which is like the other side, you know, when the whole scientific revolution enlightenment was just beginning was in its infancy. That was the term. And it was still at that point where a person could kind of have a working knowledge of all the primary scientific disciplines of the time, which of course, yeah, is before it got too focused on materialism and that kind of thing. It was still yeah, a bit, and, and yeah. too specialized. So yeah, too specialized. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, Cosmography, cosmography, you know, you could think of Kepler as a cosmographer. Certainly Leonardo was, you know, he was not only had his hands in art, but, you know, in science and technology. And so, yeah, that was the idea. Cosmography is this all encompassing um, idea. It's like mapping the cosmos. Think of it that way. And you guys do series of topics and topical uh, episodes? Yeah. So like we were talking about three through nine was we were doing an analysis of Plato's two dialogues on Atlantis and then looking at the geology and the astronomy and the geography that may support it or refute it. And I think we made the case that there is a lot of geology, geography, and astronomy, et cetera, that actually supports and is consistent with the details in Plato's account. Nice. Um, Then we did a... Oh, what else? I mean, we did a, a long series on the work of around the younger Dryas 
Yeah. We kind of segued from, from the, the dates, the dates line up because the dates line up. Yes, yeah. exactly. Um, you know, date Plato gives the date of, for the, the, the final war between the pre Hellenic, uh, societies inside the Mediterranean and the imperialist Atlantean culture from outside the, the Straits of Heracles that sailed in and attempted to subjugate all of the, the countries within the um, Mediterranean. And so this war, big war took place. And after this war, which was basically, he gave the date at three different points throughout the narrative uh, at 9,000 years prior to Solon's journey to Egypt. And Solon's journey to Egypt is usually dated around 600 BC. So you put the numbers, you do the numbers, and you come up with 11,600 years ago, plus or minus. And that was the end of the Younger Dryas, as we pointed out in the show. And it was also uh, correlated with the second great meltwater spike into the global oceans. And a pulse of rapid sea level rise because of this tremendous inrush of meltwater. They call it meltwater pulse 1B. So we talked about that, and we sort of used that as the bridge to go, okay, well, now this was brings us into the events at the, at the end of the last ice age. So we have been pretty much on that theme since then, but we talked a lot about impacts and comets and the evidence for a younger Dryas, an impact a cosmic impact at the Younger Dryas boundary. And the recent uh, episodes is we've been um, looking at the evidence for gigantic mega floods that would have been associated with the transition from glacial age to interglacial age, from Pleistocene epoch to Holocene epoch. So we've been looking at that. We've been we talked some about the mass extinction of the megafauna that took place then, which is always interesting. And so we've been talking about flood stuff. Lately, we've been talking about the drumlins. And the drumlins are the subglacial features that were probably produced by massive melt, subglacial meltwater floods that shaped the glacial till into these streamlined hills, right? So we've been looking at that. We had um, Jerome Lessman. Uh, uh, from the University of Vancouver Island, who is an expert on drumlins. And he came on and we did a whole show with him explaining all the basis of drumlins and how they're formed through turbulent subglacial meltwaters. So we've been looking at that and we've been mapping the pattern of melt great meltwater features, the, the huge oversized channels that the rivers are flowing in. The, the tunnel valleys, the drumlins, and so on. So uh, well, and, that's, and speaking of the mapping, though, we've been using uh, some new USGS software that's mm -hmm. out there. Uh, they've had the national map available online that you could uh, browse around on. But now in the last year, year and a half, I think it, it premiered, they've got uh, an advanced viewer that's got all these different layers that you can put on. So Randall's been browsing around with us, showing these troubling fields, showing these tunnel valleys. Uh, we've been cruising through New York State and into Michigan, Minnesota, uh, Wisconsin. Uh, the features are just everywhere. And then uh, most recently up into Ontario also. And this new software has layers that basically eliminates the trees and the foliage and the vegetation. And you can see the landform so clearly that driving around or even flying over it, you you don't get that sense of of how these landscapes have been formed and shaped, and uh, it, it really becomes clear, uh, you know, that there was massive ice moving things around, and then there was massive amounts of water shaping things afterward, and it's just it's really extraordinary that we've got the capability to uh, to look at the world right now and oh, is it, is that a lot of time browsing those? It's cool. Yeah, yeah. Is that the world or just North America or just America? Well, then you check North out North Central America. America as well and see some of the Central. mostly I've been focused on Canada and the U.S. I have it's mostly at... North America. I've, yeah, I've tried to look in other really. places, so it's it's USGS. It goes yeah. up in Canada. Yeah, doesn't go very far south. Right, and they're looking to uh, have the complete lidar coverage. Yeah, uh, in the wow. next, in the next two or three years. So yeah, now that there's a cloud 
that all this can be held into and people can, you know, access it freely without having to dig into these government computers, you know, uh, they've gotten all that stuff available now. So, uh, there's, there's about 60% coverage. I think now I was just looking for some, some new maps today with the LIDAR and, uh, you know, they're going to get the rest of it covered and all that be available. Uh, yeah. And, and going back to the podcast, it's the, the fact that we can all sort of every week we come together, Randall and Brad, Kyle and I, and normal guy, Mike, and Brad and Randall usually have a ton of pictures and slides from previous expeditions or other photos that they've found. Plus, Randall will pull up these maps and zoom around on them and be able to point things out to you and just move like, look over here, check out this channel, look how this works, and then switch to a picture of it and show you, you know, what it looks like in real life. And then go back to the LiDAR d- data. It's been really, and you know, so on the podcast, we're constantly learning geological terms. And Randall's giving Kyle and I crap because we can't remember them. So Kyle's learned to write them down. Uh, it's a lot of fun. And, you know, it's it's interesting because I think in my mind when we were starting the podcast with Randall, the purpose of it was I had tried to find pretty much every interview that Randall had done. You know, like a lot of people, once you hear him on Joe Rogan or whatever, you go and try to find uh, – I want to hear this guy talking everywhere, you know. So you go track down everything you can find. So Randall's done a lot of interviews, and those are usually big-picture interviews. You know, because he's got two hours or he's got three hours or whatever. And he's and he comes in and he tries to give a big picture, but he's also very detail oriented. And so the purpose of the Cosmographia platform is to give him a place to be to go through all of the details that allows him to give this big picture on the interviews he does. And so that's what we've been doing, just like one after the other, these episodes. And we're going through we're going through the scientific papers and we're looking at the nano diamonds and the the other impact proxies and really and reading the sections of the paper and just really getting into all the details that has in the past through the interviews allowed him to give these big, big picture, you know, uh, interviews. So that's what's been great for me about it. And Brad's been with Randall for, you know, researching with him for over 20 years. So he knows all these details already. So those two guys working together, uh, to do these shows has just been, it's been fantastic just to be a part of it. So. <clears throat> and we're Did like a classroom over here. Yeah. <laughs> that's why you guys were perfect. No, you good. guys were that a perfect it... fit. You guys were yeah. a perfect fit because you guys have that like super keen interest in geology and stuff like that. That just sort of, you know, makes, you know, once, once you get into the, into the, into the super details of that, it just sort of, you know, my eyes start to glaze over and, you know, I just can't <laughs> keep us. up. Yeah. Well, and Randall loves having a student to to teach. You know, I've heard of it, and our buddy, normal guy Mike, that's on us, has heard parts of it for the last ten years. We've known him also, but but Rand, uh, Russ, and Kyle are just totally open to it, and they've got geologic background, and they've done a lot of exploration, so they they can get it quickly, and they ask good questions, and uh, it's really been a good symbiosis, I think, so far. Uh, but we're spending so much time getting into the details of this catastrophe at the end of the ice age. Um, because Randall's mentioned several times, it's like the veil that's blocking us from seeing what human history might have been ah, yeah. beforehand and, and why we don't know about it. Because this catastrophe was so extraordinary and, and really global in a lot of ways that it makes sense that everything was pretty much washed away. That's kind of what I was going to ask you guys. Yeah. I was going to ask you if it seems like, and I don't know if you guys agree or not, but your research is more relevant now than ever to bring context to what's happened to us in the, in the not so distant past. And, and, you know, maybe what kind of effect we might be having on the earth or not, you know, yeah. Just to, to see those, the, I mean, I, I remember that picture from the last zoom call we had about the trip where, North America is covered in that, or not the top of North America, Canada and the Northern States, just in that massive ice sheet, massive glaciers. I mean, to me, that just says a lot right there, you know? Speaking of massive, man. Come to Texas. (laughs) Fuck Texas. Speaking of Matt, no, just kidding. Texas is great. I might come to Texas next month. Hey, you're welcome here anytime. Right now, the flights are dirt cheap. I just got to see what's going on with this rapid test, and Bill's trying to convince me to go to Florida. But I, you know, I'm ready. I think I'm ready to come down to Texas. The beauty thing about Texas is I just fucking crash at your guys' place and move to exactly. you for the yep. weekend instead of getting a hotel and all that stuff. Yeah, but, do it. Do it before you need the health passport. Well, this is exactly what I'm thinking. I'm like, flights are cheap. I'll have to wear this mask. Probably. I mean, not wearing a mask internationally might be a little risky. 
Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll go for it. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, um, it might be time to get that in because that's just the thing is maybe a year from now it might not be an option. So maybe I should jump on it while I can, even if it's not super convenient because it might get yeah. less convenient. But anyway, I was going to say, speaking of symbiosis and manga floods and younger dryas and hard goodbyes and fucking making best friends at these contact at the cabin events, I mean, we're essentially five months away, God willing, from doing this all again. And uh, kind of at, you know, what you could say is the the genesis tour of the, of the mega flood start, you know, kind of starting up there in the northwest right at the, I mean, we might come up, up into Canada eventually, but I, I would say there's still like six, there's still at least six spots left for the Scablands tour. It's a five-day event. If you go to contact at the cabin.com forward slash Carlson, all the, all the, I, there's a rough itinerary there, all the lodging info and stuff like that. And uh, if we, we might even have the chance to expand that a bit. I mean, we had already talked to resort earlier about expanding it or adding a second week. So, you know, um, if, if all this stuff we were talking about at the front of the show sounds good and you're one of these guys like Russ and myself that track down every Randall interview because you can't get enough of it, then maybe you want to come and, and hang out and check out all these sites in tour with Randall and Brad and get all the scoop firsthand. And then we, I mean, then the sun goes down and we like hoot and holler and play instruments yeah. and sing and, and, and it's really more of a, it's really more of a, a festival, you know, it's like a cross between a conference and a festival and a meetup and, and all these fantastic things. But I promise you, you won't go home thinking, man, I should not have come to this thing. That's but right. we're officially calling them protests because, <laughs> yeah, they can't or funerals, stop them, right? or we can make it we totally can, legit, <laughs> or funerals or weddings or something. What it depends. We'll we'll play it state by state. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Well, I think I might true. have a funeral for Christmas. I might have a funeral for my turkey named Butterball, who passed away sadly. <laughs> and the the dates on that trip coming up in May is it's Monday the third. People are arriving, and then through Saturday the eighth. That's so right. First, first week and of May. The idea is we're we're trying to have a very rich intellectual experience, but also an equally rich emotional experience by connecting with these landscapes and with really cool people, and eating good food and really having the adventure. So, on the one hand, yeah, we're going to be talking about science and looking at you know going out in the field and looking at these sites, analyzing these sites, seeing how they fade into the big picture. But then we're also going to be having a lot of fun, too. That's the idea. Like uh, uh, Darren was saying, you know, we, when we did uh, Colorado, we had, uh, you know, we had several parties. Afterwards, we'd get together, we'd play some music, have some Serious good food. Jam sessions. Yeah. So Randall that would did be... a lecture each night or two. Yep. We packed a lot into those three days for each each group. I yeah, packed a and, lot into the muffins. Yeah, the muffins. <laughs> and then <laughs> mentioned that we did that series of Zoom conferences prior to the event, and we will be doing the same thing with the uh, Great Flood Floodlands tour this May. Yeah, with any future event. That's, yeah, that's our plan. Event. So if you yeah. sign up. Not only do you get to go out there on the tour, but you get to join a, a sort of a Zoom conference like this. And we do at least four, sometimes more, depending on what's happening, uh, to sort of prep everybody. All attendees get invited. And, and you get familiar with each other. And there's yeah. a chat room. And so it's you already kind of you know have visited with everybody before you even get there. Yeah. It makes yeah. it even more cool. Well, let's let's. And we've already done. Oh, sorry, Randall. We've already done one for the Scablands, and if you sign up, that'll be something that's available to you to get back and watch and, and make sure you're caught up. And we're gonna. Yeah, do Darren. I can't figure out how three. to clip the front off this fucking thing. It's driving me crazy. <laughs> okay, we'll figure it out. Do you know how to do that, Graham? <laughs> what are you trying to do? If I have to. Weren't you doing that for a while, trimming the front off a YouTube video before you post it? Uh, no. It seems like I do it. It says I do it, and then I nothing changes. <laughs> we'll figure it out. <laughs> That's some inside baseball. Like yeah. Yeah, anyway, well, I would so, buy a ticket for so that I because. Say, though. Oh, no, I just I wanted ahead. to throw in that uh, all these fabulous people will be there, and also uh, 
Dave Matheson. That's right. Star yeah. guy. Yeah. So let, me, let me finish up there. Just that we're going to do one each month leading up to May. So there's, there's a Zoom call with the group that's going to go to the Scablands for mm -hmm. February, March, and April. And then we go in May. Um, yeah. So are we still getting Brandon Powell too? Well, we were looking at Brandon Powell if we did a second week. Okay. okay. But I mean, if I'm being honest, Brandon, I just talked to Brandon the other day. He's just like, Wants to come. He'd love to come. He'd yeah. love to be there. He, we could get him. You know, he he'd love to be there. He had such a blast in Colorado that yeah, that he you know all yeah, all yeah, things yeah, notwithstanding, he is fucking eager to to meet up with all, us all again. Well, that was the other aspect of our last one that people might not know about. It was he's one of Wim, Wim Hof's top trainers, and we we're doing his the breath work every morning in the in the big uh, living room, which was fantastic. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that was a great way to start the day. There we is would actually do the some... breath work, then we would have breakfast, and then we would head out. There with is Russ and Kyle at the wheel. That's right. <laughs> there is Risk still some lives. <laughs> some spots left for we've got an event April eighth to eleventh with Brandon Powell. We had a bunch of cancellations on the not a bunch, but enough cancellations on the reschedule that there's some room there. Oh, yeah. So if you're interested in going and and doing that Wim Hof stuff. We're going to do the cold training and everything. And and you get a cool contact at the cabin with the logo, the logo that Kyle drew up on a cocktail napkin. We've got those on a bunch of towels for everyone that comes out, because what we're going to do is we're going to do, uh, we're all going to stay at this Alpine ski lodge. We're going to do uh, this cold training and then we got to get a bunch of kiddie pools. We'll fill them up with ice. We'll do the cold training. We might look at doing some on location cold stuff as well. When we go to Bryce and Zion Canyons. One night we're going to go to Bryce Canyon. The next night we're going to go to Zion Canyon, head out in the afternoon, do a little hiking before dark. We're going to have dinner, meet us out there. We're going to have the same fabulous cooks, Keith and Gage, that were with us in Pagosa Springs. They'll be cooking for us again, but they're going to cook the food to go. They're going to meet us out there, say 6 p.m. at the park someplace to have dinner. And then we're going to, you know, stay out till midnight or so and just watch the stars while David Matheson regales us with mythology. Yeah. It's is gonna David going to be at the Floodlands tour? David is going to be at the Floodlands tour, so we will be doing some of that there as well. Yeah, exactly. Except without the, the canyons, we'll have the Scablands as a backdrop. And the, Oh, and yeah. The we'd be up in Grand Coulee or up at Steamboat Rock would be an awesome place to have... Yep. Some star lore. Yeah, we're going to do that a couple nights uh, during the Scablands trip as well. So the stargazing available at both events. And, uh, and uh, yeah, check it all. Uh, if you just go to contact at thecabin.com, that's a good place to get to all the events. And then, of course, now there is randallcarlson.com as well, which has any other events that Randall's doing. And I guess everything Randall Carlson is finally available in one place. That's yeah, right. We're, yeah. We're doing, uh, yeah, one place and one place only official for Randall Carlson. And um, we are planning, Brad and I and my brother Rowan are planning a brief, uh, we're calling it a backyard tour um, into the uh, Appalachians and the Cumberland Plateau area, which has got some incredible stuff that most people don't know about. For some reason, people think, spectacular canyons and things like that. You know, people start thinking Utah and Arizona. The thing about the Southeast is it tends to be obscured because we've got so many trees. But we're planning just prior to the leafing out uh, a, a tour, I think, what are we, three days? Three days and four nights? Or have I got that backwards? Yeah, I think it's, I think it's four nights. And Yeah, okay. But yeah, we're going to be showing, putting up the itinerary of that, and it's it'll be some pretty amazing stuff. And um, yeah, so we'll be doing that. The, we're calling it the Cumberland Tour. Uh, so it'll so be northeast Alabama and just barely into Tennessee around the Chattanooga area where Lookout Mountain is, uh, mm -hmm. and then into north, far northwest Georgia. Mm -hmm. So that that's kind of. The backyard we're talking about, Randall's down near Atlanta. I'm in North Carolina, so yeah. What does leafing out mean? Well, the trees, you know, um, deciduous trees lose their leaves in the winter, Graham. Okay. Oh, I thought it was like greening out. I thought it was like what happened to a lot of people at CAC. 
That was not uh, my no, fault. No, <laughs> I was very <laughs> clear <laughs> on the brownies. <laughs> Des- deciduous trees lose their leaves in the fall, and then they come back in the spring, Graham. We, we just call it fall in Canada. We don't call it leafing out. <laughs> well, no, no leafing no. out is in the spring. <laughs> yeah, oh, right, right. Out, right. See. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> leafing off and leafing Le- out. Leafing out. <laughs> leafing, <laughs> yeah. Actually, okay. speaking of Canada, so U.S. Leaf, leafing out. I, I, uh, yeah, so that means when bef- we go before the leaves all come back to the trees. Nice. So that you can still see stuff. Yeah. That's the idea. Okay, that's a good idea. Okay. I remember I, when, I, when these I guys I thought all we f- should look at a few pictures from Colorado. Okay, well, the other thing we should... What's happening to Darren's mic? Well, you can't hear me? Well, now that's good right there. Well, I was just trying to stop because I was, like, trying to get in and then stop, and I was, you know, second-guessing myself. So I was like, it probably sounded like I was breaking up. I was going to mention the things you learn about uh, internationally is when you guys all visited is when I first learned that Americans wear their shoes in the house. This was a surprise to me. Ah. (laughs) That's a cultural thing. And you know what? Every place I've gone in the U.S. since then, everyone wears the shoes in the house. I just, I can't believe it. Yep. In Canada. Like, as long as they're not muddy, but it was almost always muddy there in Colorado. So all of us had multiple oh, pairs yeah, of that shoes. Was, oh, yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. <laughs> Randall's obviously not wearing shoes. <laughs> I'm wearing slippers now. I'm wearing slippers now. Mm. <laughs> so, so the other thing I, I wanted to mention quick is that RandallCarlson.com is where everything Randall Carlson is. Sacred Geometry International is not anything Randall Carlson affiliated. Well, there's still Randall Carlson stuff there, but not authorized to be there. We'll put it that way. And leave it at that for now, yeah. For now, yes. So RandallCarlson.com, people. If, uh, if you're not there, then it's not officially Randall Carlson or Cosmographia, obviously. Yeah. That's right. And so RandallCarlson.com has, uh, it's a brand new website. It's beautiful. Uh, professionals built it and it's got everything related to the podcast. It also has a uh, blog posts that Randall is writing for it. Uh, and he's doing audio versions of those. Uh, there's uh, merchandise there. So if you want one of these awesome Cosmographia t-shirts, you know, or other merch, we're getting more Randall's made compasses. There's a uh, uh, there's the platonic solids that they make out of out of various types of wood that you can get there. All kinds of cool stuff, all available at the website, and more is always coming. Uh, so yeah, there's there's one of the the this framework. Yeah, yeah the, the framework of a dodecahedron. Yes. What I can and buy one of those on the website? Yes. Yes, yeah. you can. Yeah, and we're just we're just um and the home stretch of building our new shop. Yep. Or, so they're- they're building a shop to start to start being able to mass produce a lot of these objects because Rowan, wow. yeah, Rowan and Randall build these. They, they design and build them themselves. They're good, you know. They got and they got a good carpentry crew. Yeah, so. and they use beautiful wood. And some, some of the solid gorgeous. panel ones are just yeah. awesome looking. Yeah. Oh, I love the dodecahedrons. Yep. You need a giant set of dice, Graham. That's what I was telling you. you yeah, exactly. Roll, you you roll them out on the table, right? They're perfect. Okay, no, right here. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> okay. Sorry, guys. I was. I, I got you. You're got a Cosmographia shirt coming in, too. <laughs> What's wow. happening, Randall? He's having a catastrophe Oh, uh, right now. Oh, okay. I think there was a mega flood on the desk Uh-oh. or something. He had a mega flood. <laughs> Man, Brad, that's one of the original Grimerica shirts from the very first batch. Yeah, I've got one of those. Der- G- Graham and I did a shirt swap, podcast shirt swap at the at the Contact at the Cabin event. So this we- is the best hoodie I've ever owned, and I yeah. heard it's a one of a kind. That hoodie is amazing. Yeah, there's more of them now, but yeah, I, that's I still have my Brothers of the Serpent uh, hoodie too. It's yeah. a little tight though. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> it was a little small. <laughs> I still wear I it though. Swole yet. <laughs> I still wear it with pride. Yeah, dude, this is a great hoodie. So you guys are all wearing also, each other's shirts. That's cute. Mentioned you guys yeah. have been been talking to it. now. We work. We're working with HowTube. Mike Robertson, CEO of HowTube. We've been. And they're the ones who developed the website, and they're going to be hosting all of the po- uh, Cosmographia podcasts and, you know, the Grimer- uh, Grimerica podcasts, if you guys want to do that. So that door is open. But, you know, the, we've signed up two other flagships. One is uh, the after-school fellas who've done oh, the cool. – um, they're going pull, to be – Pull your mic up a little bit. You're a little quiet. Who, me? 
Yep. Yeah. Oh, I see what the problem is. There, there we That's go. Much better. Yeah. Sorry about that. That was uh, a consequence of the cataclysm. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So there's there's now the uh, after school, what is it, sacred numbers and things. Uh, got over half a million views so far. Um, in eight days, so that's pretty good. I guess people are finding finding it of interest. So after school is going to be one of the flagship sites uh, under the how-to banner. Excellent. So anybody who goes to RandallCarlson.com, uh-huh. you'll be able to find out about how-to, which is going to be a new platform that's going to hopefully um, – you know, rectify the imbalance that's been caused by the tech giants and their censorship and so on. So, um, yeah, we'd thinking, head over there for sure. We need to get off where we're at. Yeah. Well, Hey, yeah, you guys. Yeah. We're a Let bit of a wild you, card though. He should, you know, we're a bit of a wild card. I think Mike's okay with that. Uh, we yeah. thought he was pretty conservative when we first met him. Uh, but as we've gotten to know him, um, I'm starting to, you know, find out that he's got a wild side. So, yeah, he does. Um, yeah, I think we're. I think you're cool. Yeah, you know. Randall, your co-host wants in to the studio. I see that, and I explained <laughs> to that the co-host that look, once you're out, you're out. All right. <laughs> I'm going to let you through here, but you can go around, go around the other way, and you can get out the door. You don't have to come through here. Which brings me to the other point. As soon as we're through with their with our shop. We're shifting right over, and we're going to build a new studio. Nice. All right. Yeah, we said give give Joe Rogan a run. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're going to, yeah. Will it be yeah, a yeah, dodecahedron? <laughs> and what? Will it be a make... dodecahedron? A do, yeah, our studio is going to be, we're going to be inside a giant dodecahedron. Nice. <laughs> that would be cool. <laughs> so that hey, would be cool. But I, I don't think that's it. No, we have an unfinished room. We have an unfinished room on the back of my house, and um, we're going to finish it off in in the studio. And it'll be a studio temporarily for a year or two until we actually build a freestanding one on our property. Oh, cool. So, yeah. All right. I think now we could get to some slides. Yeah. I was thinking the same thing. So I'll do a share screen here. and. Here we go. But let's see. Um, the one I was looking for is not here. Let's see. I just had it open. You know what? I should probably let this dog through here, or the dog yeah. is going to be. Yeah, people are in the chats actually saying the dog looks sad. Yeah, you need to let the dog in. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to get a longer blanket over there. So. <laughs> Look, be able to I, I explained to you <laughs> that once we started, you weren't supposed to come bothering us anymore. Didn't I explain that to you? Okay. He's sorry. I'll be right there. Hang on. How many episodes of Cosmographia now? Uh, we got 55, but uh, it's not up yet. Working on 55 right now. So you got um, 54 released already? Has it been yeah, over a year already? 54 yesterday. Has it been over a year then? Yeah. Yep. Almost a year and a half. When yeah. we came back from contact at the cabin, uh, the four of us and Mike uh, had Zoom meetings regularly once a week where ideas were fleshed out and talked about. And we were also looking into software that we were going to be using. We got, we bought equipment. We had it shipped, you know, got Randall set up in his own studio um, so there was a lot of just organizational stuff. Where are we going to start? How, we need a logo. We need a website. We need all this. So we worked on all that, got that all, um, as we were getting that put together, then we actually recorded the first episode, um, as a trial run. It was like, when we finished, we were like, dude, <laughs> that was freaking awesome. That was awesome. Let's do Let's more. just keep doing that. And, uh, so then we got the RSS feed set up and all the accounts and everything and Brad started doing the editing and I started doing the audio and I up they went. So we just basically carried on the schedule that we started doing the zooms. Once we figured out work in zoom for the, the monthly meetings or the weekly meetings there with the, with the Bogosa Springs crowd, we just kept going on Monday yeah. night and we've stuck with it. And it's been, you know, almost two years now we've been doing Monday night meetings and that's when we record. So we really, yep. you know, started that momentum because of the contact at the cabin event. So we that's been uh, 
you know, the genesis of many great things and uh, many more great things to come, I'm sure. Yeah, we and we've been, you, you know, podcast. we still have meetings and try to figure out, well, you know, what do we like about the show? What do we do? We want to change anything? And, you know, there's little tweaks here and there. Um, make sure, you know, uh, especially that that Randall is is being able to present his material in the way that he prefers, uh, which is the most important thing. And then in a way that Brad can can edit it properly. So it's been, it's been a pleasure working with, with you guys. And, uh, definitely also with the, um, with the tours working on organizing mm-hmm. all that stuff. And I just can't wait for those to come to fruition. Yeah. And, uh, hopefully soon we'll find some better platform than zoom to do these, uh, to do our, our podcast because we need more control over the, the video and audio quality. That's from because right. we're all remote, you know. Mm-hmm. If we were all sitting in the same studio together, it wouldn't it would be, a be not a problem at all. Once we start the mystery school, though, we'll just all hang out there. Yes, there you go. that's right. Bingo. That's exactly right, Darren. And, and and Darren is not talking facetiously. He is that's actually right. talking. We this is the long range plan. So over the next few months, in addition to all the other stuff, we'll be kind of divulging some plans that we've been developing. And um, Secret plans. this is where it could get really fun and interesting. That's right. But um, we uh, should we look at a few pictures from the contact at the cabin in Colorado? Yes. Absolutely. Let's, look. Let's do censored. Oh, the censored or the uncensored ones? Uncensored. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Do we are we all seeing this? Oh, yeah. Yep. I know that all guy. All right. <laughs> Check this out. Oh, this is pretty impressive. So where is this? Well, I know where it is, dude. Yeah, I, I know. I'm asking Russ and Kyle. Yeah. Darren? Is that Chimney Rock? Yeah. Chimney Rock. You can just see the okay. tops of Chimney Rocks right there. Yeah. All right. I was confused. This Good. was one of the sites we went to um an archaeological astro archaeo astronomy site. Yeah. Pretty impressive one, as a matter of fact. Let's see if I can um Wow. Right. Yes. Yeah, you, know, you remember that? That is looking into the valley of the um um the animus. North, animus you can see yeah, the, it's just north of Durango. Just north that's, of Durango. That's from that that little uh sort of pavilion that was built up on yes. top of the hill, the lion's den, the lion's, the den. lion's den. Yeah. Yep. And uh, yeah, those were, that was a beautiful structure. And then you were talking to us about, I remember you standing up here and, and holding forth for a while about the, the tongue of the glacier coming down. And then you pointed out the hills in the front and how that was the terminal moraine. Yeah. And that blew my mind. I'd never, I'd never been, I'd never seen a valley that was created in that fashion and uh yeah or at least not recognized it before and never recognized it for sure but that was awesome is that what you you were looking down on when the when the vans were dodging the rock slides on the way up the mesa verde hill (laughs) no No. (laughs) this was just that we we made a little side excursion to here um and if you're looking at this now you can actually see this is some more uh, excuse me terminal mooring right here this hill and it was continuous over here, but they've they've excavated a lot of it because as the valley floor is getting developed, um, you know, the evidence of the, the presence of the glaciers is getting more and more obscured and, and erased. But you can see right over here on the left, that's terminal mooring. So in other words, this is the material that was sort of bulldozed in front of the glacier snout that came from these mountains. Picture during the Ice Age, these mountains were almost completely buried under ice. And the ice tongue came all the way down this valley, scraping the sides of these hills. That's why they're bare here. Came down and the snout of that glacier terminated and fluctuated pretty much right in this valley floor right in front of us. And that was why we actually went here was so that I could point out the the moorings to people. But I hadn't been there before, so I didn't know to what extent the moorings were still going to be intact and they're getting obscured, but there's still enough there that one can actually see the piles of gravelly bouldery debris that was 
you know, and, and if you could see the other side of the valley, you would see that these were arc shaped because that's sort of the, the, the lobe that the, um, the glacier lobe. Let's see, we might be able to see more in this one. So this is an example of people yeah. living right on these ice age remnants, but you can't really see them. But once you look at these maps that yeah. clear all that away, it's like, oh, well, that's pretty obvious what happened there. Yeah, so, yeah, like right here, there's houses built on top of the terminal mooring. And I'm just wondering how many of these people, like, did the people who live here, do they realize, hey, we're living on top of a terminal mooring? They probably well, don't even know they... what that is. Um, Unlikely. <clears throat> so, uh, <clears throat> but let's see here. Let's jump ahead. Yeah, here's, ah, there we go. Hey, there's Darren. Hey, yeah, that's right me. <laughs> what a nice yeah. sweater. What happened to that? Where Where are you here, Darren? Is that me? It is me. Yeah, that's you. I don't know where I got that shirt. Well, I don't know either. If you don't know, I don't know. Is that Mesa Verde? Yeah. I know why you don't remember that shirt. <laughs> yeah. I can probably name a few reasons why you don't remember. <laughs> Too much weed? <laughs> Let's Remember that take giant a, joint? Let's take a look at it. What does that say? I must have borrowed that from someone because I was cold. Yeah. I'm looking like pretty good, though. I'm looking something. all right. This is yeah, we're up on that. We're up on the rim of Mesa Verde there. Yep. We're looking uh, to the south, pretty much. And let's see. Can we see? Is that uh, where we could see that other <clears throat> formation real far, far away? What was that called? Um, ship, or ship Rock? Ship yeah, Rock. Ship Rock. Ship out rock. The other ship direction. Rock. Yeah, I think so. Call, which stop that is, if that's right as soon as you get in the park or even before we got into the park. This is where, oh, okay, this is where we're coming up, up on the rim, right. up onto the plateau. Yep. Yeah. What a wild view from up there. I know it. it. God, wasn't it though? And then there was all those little, like the added bonus of all those little, like abandoned little ruins and villages from the Pueblo people, I think. Yes. Yep. And uh, yeah, it's like so many sheer falls where you could just instantly fall to your death. Luckily, uh -huh. no one did. We had waivers though. So just so you know, if you do yeah. come to an event, you will be signing a waiver. And we only we only lost a couple on the trip. Yeah, we only I mean, lost, we, yes, we got like a 4% loss. But we are going to recover. There remains uh, at some point. The spring so, thaw. Right. Uh, yeah, so that was. Uh, yeah, we were on a tight schedule, so we decided we'd have to come back for the uh, to, for the recovery. Yeah, our general policy is leave no man behind, but you know sometimes you have to make exceptions. That's right. Like when you're in a hurry to get to the <laughs> next <laughs> to the next site. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is. You remember it was quite windy and chilly that day. I think it snowed once uh, when we were up there, didn't it? Well, it did. Yeah, yeah the yeah. second time, the second group we went up there, hey. it was a blizzard, practically. Yep. Yep. Yeah, here we are. These Some of these amazing canyons up on the surface, the top of the plateau, was a mystery about how they were carved up here on the top of the plateau. I mean, where was the water source to feed the erosion that created these canyons? That was the mystery. These are some pretty impressive canyons. Let's see. Ah, yeah, and here we oh, go. There's one of those little those little villages down there. Yep. Yeah. So and yeah, they're not little no. either. I mean, oh, no. story buildings inset into that canyon. But they, they looked little. Yeah. Right. And this is, is this the one we stayed in? <laughs> no, we, did, we didn't stay in any. That's 79 a night. <laughs> Yeah, so this is two two different ones here. See, this is that's one, and then this is another one. And yeah, it was. It's it's hard to imagine the scale here too, because right. those those cliffs are huge, and the and it's not like the land at the bottom where the where the the dwellings are comes out and is flat. It literally drops off again to another massive cliff, and we're just like, how? Yeah, who? Who? How? And, uh, <laughs> why? <laughs> yes. What? Yeah. How do you raise kids at a place like this? Yeah. Look yeah. at the cliff down below that thing. Yeah. 
Here you I mean, go. do you remember that trail we walked down the in the gorge? I mean, that was oh, yeah. You know, to go see the petroglyphs. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Treacherous. It's not like you can just do that stroll daily, you know. Nope. Yeah, and I remember reading uh, one of the plaques was talking about the first, um, I guess, tour guides that went up into uh, Mesa Verde to look at the cliff dwellings. Um, was a, I think it was a ten day trip. They took horses, like like took wagons part of the way, and then horses, and then they had to hike and with pack animals the rest of the time. And it, I mean, just to get there, yeah. So uh, it's amazing that these people, whoever they were, what they were doing there, and that they built so much in this in this remote place. I know. Yeah, it's it's pretty amazing, and pictures obviously don't do it justice look you can actually see some people over here to kind of give you a sense of the scale oh yeah in fact that might be you guys no oh, that was a, it takes a while to get around to that other side yeah it does yep. yeah see the people well you flip by past it but yeah there's people a bunch of people going on a tour through it there's oh, some oh, wild yeah. pictures of people on the edge of cliffs, though, and uh, we had that yeah. folder going for a while where everybody was uploading the pictures. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh, I remember playing in those ruins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we. So Mesa Verde was an all-day trip. We got up pretty early, ate breakfast immediately, and oh, left. There's Mark. Yeah, yep, there's Mark. Yeah. Yeah, he was in our entourage. Yep, two he did the whole thing in Birkenstocks. Yeah, he did. <laughs> yeah, he did, didn't he? <laughs> Snow day and all, yeah. Uh, there was, there was. Let's see. There's Kyle. Is this Russ? That's me with the backpack, I think. It was Mark again, I think, up on the cliffs there. I remember crawling down to that thing too. Oh, down in in the into the kiva. Yeah. What's that? I hope that's not like a latrine. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I've got that picture where Darren is poking his head out of this hole. <laughs> this Man, was, that was um, a cool place. It was. Yeah, and so the 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 the, the great thing about the trips, both um, uh, Chimney Rock and Mesa Verde, was that we were looking at both these ancient ruins and this geology. Uh, yeah, and studying them both, and you know, wondering what the if they're related or what the context is, you know, and and how did this, how did both of them happen? So there were two mysteries uh, to to uh, to explore the whole time, and it was just really great. And then each night during the trip, Randall would give a presentation, sometimes on either maybe what we were going to look at the next day, or when we had done both of the. Um, when we had gone already gone to Chimney Rock and then Mesa Verde, that night he would give a presentation on just whatever he decided he wanted to talk about. And it was just, oh man, the whole trip was amazing. And then we would party and jam out and get hammered. Uh, you know, <laughs> it was great. I, I remember it really coming home to me that when Randall would describe that this was all built around the same time as other things in the global civilization, oh, yes. like from the year, I think European and South, South American mm -hmm. yeah. all around the same time. Yeah. Indo China. The yeah. So, and this was cool. I mean, like when we were here, we pretty much had this place to ourselves. Totally. Yeah. We and, had almost all the places we showed up to ourselves. Actually, Chimney Rock <laughs> was a little crowded. Right, but you know there was that one which group we had a group up there, and the guy just says, "Okay, well I'm heading back down. See y'all later." Yeah, and left us there to perform our satanic rituals. No, there we was didn't some. Do that. There was a few rituals performed, but they weren't satanic. What were they? Mostly standing around in circles, passing around. Uh, oh, that yeah, okay. sweet grass. Uh, yeah. Was that the was that the Adelaide Championship? The world yeah. champion Adelaide guy. <laughs> yeah, we did a mock up of a Colombian mammoth. Remember the night we seen uh, all the moons of Jupiter through that crazy like binocular set? I don't yeah, so people yeah. brought spotter spotter scopes. Uh, Archer brought that awesome yeah. spotter scope. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And we had lasers. Hey, is that Chase? 
That is. I think so. Yeah, that's, that's a group, chase. Group hey, and then there. there's Adam back there. Yep. Okay, which one is Chase? Chase right is in the front. Right right. Oh, right here. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Him. Yep. He's the accountant. That's right. <laughs> so he's a, yeah. And who else have we got there? That's Adam this? there in the middle in the blue jacket. Right here. Yeah. Nope. I don't okay. know who else. I don't know if I recognize anyone else in that picture. Oh, I recognize all of them. I don't remember their names, though. Oh, yeah. I don't remember anyone's name. Or, you know what? That right there is the fella who's, uh, what's his name? Was it Mark? Remember, we were staying at his cabin as well. Which one? Yeah. Right there. Right to directly the left. left in the middle there. there. Yeah. This guy? Yeah. Uh-huh. I get his name. I'll remember his name here in a sec. Yeah, this was the first group, so this yeah, group one, where yeah. their names have slipped. Yep. The guy on the right yeah. there was a great photographer. He sent in some great pictures after that. Oh, uh, that's Matt. That's Matt. Yeah. Remember, because Matt had the place down in Pagosa Springs where we had, like, uh, Cabin 2.0, which worked out great with overflow, the kids. Yeah. We, did oh. some we did a podcast with Alan Green there. We did a podcast with Alan Green and with John McAfee on his when he was still <laughs> island hopping. A lot on the boat. <laughs> and that was a great show, by the way, with Alan Green. Yeah. <sighs> We're going to connect with Alan here in January and do another show. Awesome. I'd like to hear an update. I here think he go. just met with the Dalai Lama or something. Wow. There's Darren again. Yep. What am I doing? I don't know. <laughs> should we, should we, <laughs> no, 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 we no, no, zoom no. in and take a look? What a shocker! <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, apparently, <laughs> some of the other group finds <laughs> finds it uh, of interest. Yeah, I think they're watching, huh? yeah, yeah, let's see. waiting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was a it was ceremonial. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> that could be anything. Yeah, it could be right. <laughs> you got any of the the chalet itself? I think so, yeah. What a great spot that was, eh? Yeah, that was extraordinary. Yeah. Coyote Village. I'm surprised okay. no one was shooting. Ah, there's, there's the one with Shiprock way There's there, Shiprock yeah. off in the distance. How far did we figure that was away? 40 miles or something? Wait, doesn't that mean the Earth is flat? Oh, man. Uh, I thought it was farther than that. I don't remember. I was thinking it was maybe 80, but yeah, that's 1,700 foot, what do you call it, a diatreme out there diatreme, right in northwest yeah. New Mexico. Yeah. So this was once the surface of the land, 1,700 feet higher than it is now, and it's all eroded away, and only the hard basalt of that volcanic neck remains. But yeah, it's 1,700 feet high. It's it's an impressive uh geological feature but of course we didn't get down there we didn't have time but it was cool to be able to see it in the distance would that be close to four corners no yeah. um Makes no messaging. not really um it would be southeast of four corners yeah still pretty close yeah still pretty close i mean closer than mesa verde to four corners, yeah. Yeah. We'll have there to you check that out next time. And then the Grand Canyon can't be far from there either. Like, we just need a couple months down there with some RVs. There we go. With some RVs. Yes, but the, but the gentleman that uh, rented you the cabin, he was a really Bob. cool guy, too. You guys did a podcast with him. Oh, yeah. Uh, he was, he was a, a lawyer that was just, like, really interested in pyramids. You remember that? And he did talks on synchronicities. I mean, yeah, it's yeah. unbelievable. Dude, yeah. it was that was a great show. And uh he came by the cabin one one evening and visited with everybody. Uh and it was a really nice, really nice place. Yeah, we should definitely consider going back there one day. It would be yeah. it would be great to go back there. And I forget what was the what was the like the the house guy's name that like lived at the house and Ken. Oh yeah, the <clears throat> Ken. Yeah, Ken was fucking fantastic. I mean, we, it yep. would be great to get back up there again for another yeah, one. Helpful guy. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, we had twenty plus people in the house. I mean, it had however many eleven rooms or thirteen room bedrooms or something, and then people in tents set up outside. Yep. Uh, 
And they set up the grounds for us to do uh, camping real nice. They put uh, chipped wood out everywhere so it wouldn't be muddy. It was uh, it was really nice. And look, in this picture, There's I think Kyle. I may have just found an arrowhead. Yeah, just, could, that's just, Kyle's arrowhead face. I'm just like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> arrowhead face. There's, you're obviously looking at something there. Yeah, so we're just, this is the parking lot at the base of the chimney rock. So we're all gathering to, to make our climb up to the top to, to see the, uh, the observatory and the kiva, the great kiva, and the rocks themselves. Um, I don't remember which group this was. It all sorts of melds together. Yeah, well, like we talked about, the second group it was snowing and really cold. The third group it was Hot pretty much sunny. perfectly sunny. So, I had a bit of a clue. Uh huh. Well, it's sunny so, in this picture. Yeah, so that's group three there. Yeah. Well, let's see. I must have had my other camera. Man, we we took that wrong turn. So, like, we were driving down and. Uh, had the kids in the back and everything and missed ah! the, missed the turn. So I like I remember I called Graham and we're talking to him and he's like, Oh yeah, you turned off at what's it called, right? Like how long ago did you turn off at what's it called? And I had remember passing what's it called, like I can't remember the name of the town, but two I, hours I ago or something. It's like two and a half yeah. hours ago and not turned off. And and it was starting to get <sighs> weird because we were getting closer and closer to Vegas. Like I think at yeah. this point we were we were like it's like two hundred miles to Vegas. And I was like I did not realize that, uh, that that Vegas was this close to Pagosa Springs, and yeah, that's when we figured out that we had driven two and a half that's hours right. in the wrong direction. That. So we hit the I seventy though, and it turned out to be because we got to cut from the I seventy now from just about the Nevada border all the way across Utah, which was fucking fabulous. Yeah, it's like another place uh, up yeah. there. Yeah, some of the awesome. slot canyons and the views out there were unbelievable. Highly recommended, definitely. Like, but yeah, I remember think you Utah kept not sucks? showing up. Yeah, yeah, I, we missed the whole first night. Yeah, I missed meeting Bob and all that stuff. Yeah, I remember like Graham calling me and uh, being like, "Well, you're gonna you're gonna have to do the MC thing because I'm like you know five hours yeah. away still." That's right. I remember talking. I was like, "Where's Darren?" He's like, "I don't know. I I got. I guess I got to introduce everybody." <laughs> we drove. Yeah, like good job, you did a great hours. job, Graham. Yeah. Wow. I thought you were the guy in charge. For yeah. Sure. <laughs> oh yeah, man. Graham definitely is the guy appeared to be Graham was the one in charge. <laughs> so here we got Chimney Rock. So we climbed up there. We didn't climb to the top of Chimney Rock, but just on the other side of the the pinnacle there that you see was the observatory, which should be in the next picture. You can actually see it's it's two rocks because the archaeolo I mean the astronomical significance is that you can use the space between the two rocks to um line up with the solstices and the equinoxes. So let's see. Yeah, here we are. And, up the, under, and the moon, too, right, I think? The lunar, oh, yeah, yeah. The lunar, the lunar, the lunar yeah. Cycle. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. There you can see the slot between the two rocks. So that is being used as a, um, you know, a, 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 a sighting to, sighting to line up with the position on the horizon. Yeah, there we go. I was there. Gale man was a little close in that one. <laughs> yeah. And let's see. I think we got oh, that's some the lake that's at the cabin. property yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like but where's the, the there. where's the resort itself? Let's see. We're back at Mesa Verde. Let me click on through. Yeah, those were out of place. Well, remember, Ooh, see, we nice we went there that. three times. Cheru. Oh. That waterfall. Yeah. Where was yeah, the like waterfall? Rain Rainbow Falls. That was. That one on the way up to the Continental Divide. Yeah. Yes. Which night in it was it that everyone got caught in the blizzard? Well, remember when we first got to the Rainbow Falls, it was uh, snowing pretty pretty heavily. We right. went through quite a bit of snow on the I seventy two. Go when you got up uh -huh. to the super high elevations, it would be snowing. 
We're Maybe looking it was back the first at full day after Group Two got there. We're looking back here at Wolf Creek Pass. So we're looking right. to the west here, and but just behind us is the Continental Divide. Um, and this I I'm going to think that must be Kyle right there. That's your hair, hippie. I know it. Uh, <laughs> some diluvium. Okay. Well, yes, yeah, snowing. Let's see. Let's see. So I must have, must be on my other folder that I've got pictures of the actual facility that we stayed in. And of course, in, in when we go in uh, May, we'll be staying at the Soap Lake, Soap Lake Resort. Yeah. And let's do another and quick. Last, yeah. Got some pictures of that too. Yeah. Let's see. So it'll be a little different setup, it'll, but it's still going to be, yeah, it's going to be awesome. Yeah. So this is right there at the south end of Soap Lake, which is uh, at the south end of Grand Coulee. So this is right in the middle of the the whole complex. So we're going to be using this as our base of operations. Let's take a look here at some of the. All of these cabins here are part of it. And yeah, so here's the south end of Soap Lake. And you're just seeing the beginning of, of Grand Coulee there. Um, so each room has got uh, two faucets, one for regular water and one for the hot spring water. So uh, you got your own hot spring uh, uh, tub in, in every room. Yeah, so we've we've reserved this place. And this will be our base of operations. This is the owner. Too. Oh well, of course it won't be snow while we're there. I I'm just looking at these. We these are think. on these are on the internet. So this is the website of the place. So I, these are not pictures that I took. But <clears throat> but you can see here the the cabins are quite nice, and the location is great. So we're going to have a lot of fun. Let's see if oop. and they. They're, they own their own restaurant, and they're going to do all the catering, right? They're catering as well, yeah. So we'll, like, uh, when you show up, they'll give you a bunch of, either right before you get there or when you show up, they'll give you, you'll get to choose between a couple of things, yeah. Well, there's some snow. Yeah, so. That's know, what it looks we... like. And we got, like, the most snow we've got in fucking 10 years yesterday. Yesterday, the day before. My backyard, they got fucking two feet of snow back there. Wow, wow look at this. Well, I don't think it's going to look like this in May. Maybe not. Probably not. If it is, I'm not, I won't be able to drive there. So, yeah, well, people will be staying in these cabins or, you know, I think there's some other places nearby. I mean, there might be a motel or two in town. And then, of course, there's... What are um, those little pod things? <clears throat> that's, they that's, like a sauna. Sauna. that's a sauna. Yeah. yeah. Are they hot right boxable? Here, yeah. That's so, yeah. my room. <laughs> we're going to be there. We're going to be there every night, and we'll branch out in different directions for day trips, and then yeah. come back to the same place. So you won't have to haul your gear around. You know, we'll just be set up there and uh, spoke out different directions each day. Yeah, yeah if, if we're the out for the are... day, they'll send you'll have a lunch to pick up on your way out to take with you. And the the place the the accommodations are very spacious, and there's we'll have. Uh, access to a place where we can all gather and meet, um, and that'll be where you're. You'll give presentations like you did last time, right? Uh, yeah, presumably. Presumably. Uh, yeah, because I mean, when we stayed there before, uh, the room we were in, hell, would have been easily accommodate twenty or twenty five people. Oh yeah. Okay. It's a nice yeah, big a huge, room, huge kitchen, dining area, living room area. Yeah. Big oh, all right. Tub in wow. there. Uh, but but yeah, with the restaurant. You know, there's a, uh, you know, a big space where they can do like wedding receptions and stuff. So there's there's a big space right across the street for that. If if we need that bigger space, but yeah, some of the rooms are are quite quite large. But then yeah. there's some of the original ones that are pretty small too. Um, so yeah, there's a there's a collection. It's it's been new ownership, I think, about five five years so ago. What are the sites we're going to be going to look at the? The basic itinerary. How's what's it? What's that going to be? Well, <laughs> you want to run through that, Randall? 
Well, uh, I, can pull up, sure. I can pull up the website and go through the itinerary on there if you want. Yeah, first first day we run towards Spokane. Um, but yeah, there, there's, all, there's always a, more on the list that we're actually physically going to be able to get to. And, you know, as you go, like we found out yeah. uh, last, last October in uh, Sedona, you know, things just get squeezed out and people really enjoy a certain spot. So you have to make decisions. And uh, um, so we yeah. put in a lot of sites uh, just in case we were able to best case scenario, get to all of them. But uh, th- there's no shortage of places to go in, in every direction out there. We could, we could spend two weeks out there easily. We oh, got, easily. Yeah. And it'll be flexible enough to where if, if we really love some site or we decide we want to hike some trail to go see some petroglyphs or something, we can do it or like we did last time. Oh yeah. Day yeah. one, it looks like we got to plan it on in the evening. Cause we'll be arriving all day. Day one in the evening, we're going to go check out the potholes cataract. Oh yeah. That's day one. That's the evening of check-in First day. First night, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we do some sunset over there. And then it'll work out. day two, head to Spokane Valley, conduit for floodwaters from Purcell Trench and Clark Fork Valley, Crab Creek Cooley Upper, Bowl and Pitcher State Park, Hangman Valley, Silata Creek, Steptoe Butte Sunset. Okay. Day, that's day three. We're only fucking a day and a half into this thing. Can you imagine? Day three, toward Columbia River Gorge, conduit for floodwaters exiting the Scablands, Potholes Reservoir slash Drumheller, Channels, Wahula, Wallula Gap, Devil's Canyon, and Palos Strait State Palos? Palos? Palos. Palos. Palos Falls State Park. Palos rhymes with caboose. Perfect. Palouse. Palouse the caboose. Day okay, four. Check. Oh, yeah, okay. That day, that day will be amazing. Check this out, guys. Okay, so you said first day potholes cataract. So here, let me get this out of the way. And um, there we go. Okay. Yeah, that's the spot that really, you know, blew Joe Rogan away because he, you know, like, most people, you can see it right away. You know what the heck that's from because you've seen it in a very tiny scale somewhere in, along a creek in your life, but there it is, you know, three miles long. Right. The water came from the east, which is from the right, and this is a ridge, and it spilled over this ridge, and wa- the waterfall gushed down about um, a 1,000 feet into the level of the Columbia River. Each of these squares is a mile, so you can see right here this is almost two miles wide. And then from the river, one, two, three, four, uh, five miles from the beginning of the trench entrenchment of the water here to where it finally spilled over. And it's called potholes because you can see the round potholes here that formed because of the incredible turbulence. The water here was probably on the order of two to 300 feet deep as it's pouring over the lip of this ridge, the Babcock Ridge. Yeah, here you can see the the round why it's called potholes. <clears throat> and then this is the blade rock or the rock blade. And you can we actually one of Brad's early drone excursions we uh was done from up on this rock blade. And where could people where's a link for people to see that? Is it it's online anywhere? Oh yeah, it's on the uh on the YouTube channel, um, the Geocosmic Rex channel. Okay. Uh, we can put that link or we can put it in some different places to make it available. But uh, yeah, youtube.com slash geocosmic Rex. Well, yeah. So then people will get a sense of, you can't really get the sense of the scale of this thing, but with that drone footage, it's, you, you really do. Is yeah, that the rock a, fin I lost my hat on? No, no, oh, no. Okay. That was in Grand Coulee. No, no, Darren, you, you haven't been here yet, Darren. Okay. Just making it's, sure it all, similar. it all blends together. Okay, this is an aerial photograph that we took, God, way back, at probably 1998. Yeah, I was say, that was the first trip out there, yeah, 98. 98, yeah. And here's your rock blade right there, which is a tip of, so these are two alcoves. Right, so, called. yeah, you're a, that, that was Dry Falls, though, that was not potholes. This? No, this is, this is potholes. Right there, that's Dry Falls. No, all the others are potholes. That's where I lost my hat. Yep. 
Cause that's yeah, a right convention in, right center in, that, in the top, right? Right. That saddle, that saddle just, uh, just oh yeah. Cause this is sun lakes left. and there is the visitor center. Yeah. Can you see the yeah. resort in this pick? No, but our, no, the resort where we'll be staying is at the south end of this. This is Lower Grand Coulee here. About 20 miles south of there. But this. Yeah, that's definitely potholes there. Yeah. And this is Frenchman Coulee, which was another spillway. Which I'm not even sure we're going to be able to get to. Probably not. West Bar. One of the giant gravel bars with giant current ripples. You can look at this little, this is a three-story building down here, that little spot. Give you a sense of the scale. So we'll probably see this, won't we? Yes. Yeah. Um, Current ripples in, in uh, in the Columbia. This is on West Barn. You can see a little human figure down here for scale. Is that Brad? No, it's my brother Rowan, and he just photoshopped in. But it is the correct scale. However, when we get there, we've got to set this up beforehand so we get somebody who's going to rendezvous over to the other side of the river and hike down there so we can have an actual real person in the picture. So that Brad's not, like, his job's not taken away by CGI? (laughs) Right. (laughs) Somebody's got the hand glide down in there. That's a long way. I'll, I'll go over a, there. I'll volunteer. Hey, well, I'll there land. is a there's a and there's a landing strip down here. See, so you can actually drive down, and then you'd probably have to hike half a mile over these ripples. But it does give you a sense of how awesomely huge these ripples really are. I think Graham and I could squirrel suit parachute into that spot. I think so. You, I think. you guys will just yeah. like fall down on the ground right at the base. I mean, it's <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. guys in your imaginations. So but we could get James to go in his wingsuit, maybe. He's like a professional skydiver. It depends how so, tall it is, I think. Right? The team grows. We're not going to be able to get there or there. No, we won't get here. Oh, where's that? This is volcanic ash sandwiched in between giant flood sediments. Showing that while the floods were sloshing across the land, there were huge volcanic eruptions blowing their tops. So it would have been a pretty hectic time. This is Wallula Gap. We are going to get to Wallula Gap. Yeah, that's right? on day three. Yes. Yep. Okay. And we're going we're gonna to try to make our way up here to the overlook. Yeah, depending on the capability of our vehicles, yeah, we'll determine how far we're going to have to hike. So, yeah, if I go back to here, this top of this cliff right here is up up here. Yeah. And this is the overlook. We would be looking down to Columbia here, which is to the west. And then we'd be looking um, to the east up into Pasco Basin. So during the flood or floods, there was so much water at one point that came through here that it reached all the way up to the rim of this cliff. So this whole area here was completely submerged and here are some erosional remnants of the incredible erosional force as the water forced its way through this gap you see what you have to realize when you go back here is you had water pouring in in all directions and it was all bottlenecking right here and trying to force its way through and check over uh, out here over here you've got some circular erosional features which again is showing the the vorticular turbulence of the water trying to push its way through the gap here. And right here where it says, see two sisters with the arrows pointing right here, that is the two sisters right there. So prior to the floods ripping through here, the, the sill of this was up at the top of the two sisters. So all of this material in between got ripped away by the floods. That's our original scale man, uh, nicknamed Wilbur. Yeah, that's what our original. To Nick, did he fall off something? <laughs> no, he just liked it up there so mm-hmm. much. He decided to stay there, so he's still there now. And when we go by through here, we wave to him. No, he's a uh, he's an acupuncturist and has a clinic outside of Atlanta, and he was. 
a member of our very first recon trip out there in 98. Um, Should I roll on to day four? Sure. What's day four got us? Day four is we head north toward the Okanagan Valley, which is in Canada. Con we're not going to go into Canada, just so you know. We'll be staying in the continental United States. Toward right. the Okanagan River Valley, conduit for floodwaters directly from Canada. Withrow Moraine, Boulder Park, Moses Coulee, mm. Big Bend Grand Terrace, and Yeager Rock. Yeah, Jaeger. I think Jaeger. it's pronounced Jaeger Rock. You mean we're staying in America? We're staying in America, home of the free ish. <laughs> Just a pointer here. We're we're an hour and a half plus. Okay, well let's yep. let's get to day five then, because that's the that's the last full day we've got. Okay. And that's up and down Grand Coulee, the most grand floodwater eroded conduit, Sun Lake slash Dry Falls Cataracts. Grand Coulee Dam Overlook, Steamboats Rock State Park, and then it just says PARTE in all caps with an exclamation point. PARTE. <laughs> I, got Par the, I got the itinerary from Brad, so it's, it's yeah. official. <laughs> it's official. <laughs> Can't wait. Oh, can do it. And then after the party, so that's day six. Four full you, days. Yeah. Yeah, and then a partial day the first day when everybody gets there, and then yeah, the next morning everybody cuts out. Yeah, and of course that doesn't include some of the presentations we'll be doing in the evening. We'll be doing some stargazing with David Matheson, and then that's that uh, Saturday morning. You just sort of wake up, hang out. We got to check out by noon. We'll have the shuttles leaving. Then we'll send one one van to Seattle to drop some people off, and one van to Spokane, and. And the way you guys go, and then we'll decide whether or not we might be doing it all again, or we might not. Yep. <clears throat> I'll do one more screen share before we part. Hey. And uh, well, the week the week after this is the uh, this is why we shifted the the program already because the Sedona event, uh, Earth Origins uh, conference is down there in Sedona. We're going to be participating in the 14th through the 16th. Or Randall's going to participate. I hope we're all going to get there. Just one other thing so. I'll say quick is there is a note on the, if you go to the website, which is contact at the cabin dot com slash Carlson, uh, there is a note that says day two and four are 200 plus mile round trips. I mean, it is important that if like, if you ain't down with driving or you don't have to be in the van, if you want to follow along in a car or something, that's fine. But you, it's on you to keep up with us. Ideally, we would rather have everyone in the van. If not, that's fine. Um, but they are, you know, even when we were going to Mesa Verde, like, like the boys were saying, it was, uh, you know, it was not a short day. It's leaving at, you know, nine in the morning, eight in the morning, right after breakfast. And you're not getting home until 10 or 11 at night stopping, you know, you're kind of stopping right as soon as you get out of the park at a little, a little strip mall or we went to that Mexican place for, for dinner. And then, yep. you know, just so... A couple of these days here, just just be prepared to be, you know, out in the field for 12, 12, or, 12 or so hours. Yeah. That's right. But you don't have to drive. We got the snake bros for that. That's right. And drive home, it was like a, it was like a sleeping truck. You know, everyone was passed out. So... It was, uh, it was, it was a lot of fun, though. Well, Brad tried... A fun. Brad tried to stay awake. Mostly he, he succeeded, but Randall definitely was sleeping. The, the chats are not going to let us get out of here without that last promise screen share. Yeah, there we go. All right, Google Earth, and here's Soap Lake, and the resort we're staying in is right, right, it's probably this right here. I think it's this. Um, oh, you see where that East Beach Park is? I think it's, well, you might, you might be right. Yeah, that's not too important, but you can see here how it is at the south end of the Great Coulee. And we'll be traveling up this Coulee, and here we get into some amazing scab land right here. And here is the Great Cataract Complex that we'll be stopping at. Hopefully the visitor center will be open right here. We may get down into the on the lower end. Um but yeah, so that's the Great Cataract Complex. 
And then we've got Upper Grand Coulee. And there's Steamboat Rock, which is an erosional remnant. Pre-flood, the basalt came continuously across here. But the flood came from the north up here from the direction of Grand Coulee Dam and just came right down this way. And let's see if I can pull this up, this map. And a lot of the places we're going to visit are, are places that we went with Graham Hancock and his wife in, in uh, 2014 when he was researching for uh, his book, Magicians of the Gods. Yes. So there is a video series um, that you can you can find through the RandallCarlson.com website. Uh, we did a series of short videos. They they let me, uh, Graham and Randall approved me going ahead. Just it was me with the camera, but they said, well, yeah, let's let's do some of this. So we got some interesting uh, maps and and graphics of the floods going through these different places, and uh, just just the two of them talking about where we are and Randall describing these events. So that's a good little series you can go through in less than an hour of six different videos of us out there. Well, I got to say before we go, man, in the in the six years we've been, six or seven years we've been talking to each other, man, this video presentation has come a long way. Zoom, the technology, I mean, I remember the first yeah. time we tried to do slides and stuff like that, it was, you know, nothing wanted to work, but, you know, it's yep. it's looking great. Isn't it, though? And especially the Cosmography episodes with the editing and all that, it, it's fantastic. Yeah, props that. go to Brad and Kyle for all that. Kyle does the audio, and then Brad does the video, and they come out fan they come out amazing. So, so by this time, good. people should know we've got Upper Grand Coulee, Lower Grand Coulee. There's Randall, so you're gonna, have to, you're gonna have to switch your share if you're showing us a different map. We're still oh. seeing Google Earth. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. No problem. There it I'm is. Learning. There we go. So, so then, this is the uh, software I was talking about earlier. Yeah, that looks yeah, like this incredible map software. So you can see here all of the flow forms from the water discharging out of Grand Coulee here, and this is called Quincy Basin right here, and this is uh, Frenchman Springs anticline. This is Crab Creek anticline, and these are just upfolds. So they acted as a sort of a break, a dam. So when the the great mass of flood water came down. We had nine miles across here where it says Potholes Reservoir. This is the Drumheller Channels. And we'll be making, we're going into Drumheller Channels, right, Brad? Yes. Yeah, briefly. Briefly? Well, maybe the top end of it? Yeah. Yeah, this is an amazing. Right for Goose Lake. Um, maybe, maybe we'll jump off the cliff over there again. Oh, yeah. Let's, yeah. Okay. Cliff jumping. Darren, we're going to be uh, throwing you off the cliff into Goose Lake. Sure. Okay. That's fine. So that detail, that's awesome. This is a big spillway here. Um, and then if we go over here, you'll and see. And then that's how it forced it to the west, uh, to those pothell areas into the gorge, kind of? Yes, exactly. So here's Potholes Cataract and Frenchman Cataract yeah. right here. So see, we can. that's what we were just looking at. So it kind of got jammed up there, and then in those three spots, like one went south and two went west. Actually, and then there was another one, a smaller top one, there, yeah, right yeah. here, yeah, called uh, Crater Cooley. Huh. Yep. So yeah, we'll be seeing a lot of that. And then let's go down here to um, Wallula Gap. So that's all. Lots of agricultural fields out there. You know, it was a temporary lake, so it's got all these nice yeah. uh, sediments on the base of the the Quincy Basin there. Yeah, so this was where all of the waters came together right here at Wallula Gap and then forced their way through down to Columbia. And we will not get past Wallula Gap. We just, you know, not unless we had two weeks. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be a, it's going to be an awesome trip. A lot and of territory to cover. A lot of territory to cover. We're going to do Palouse yeah. Falls, um, which is... Right in here. Yep. This was the original Palouse River came this way and flowed down. This is the old Palouse River channel this way, and it flowed down into the Columbia over here. But when the great floodwaters came from the north, 
They came right down through here, and you can actually see the streamlined features, almost drumlin-like. You see that? All of this? So yeah. all of this was huge currents that came down this way, and when they hit the, the Palouse River, they basically just overflowed and cut a new channel right here. So once they cut that new channel, it diverted the Palouse River here, and it abandoned the old channel, which got, which carried an enormous amount of water and then got filled with sediment. There's another spillway right here. It's like a big gash across the ridge. Um, and this is Devil's Canyon, is it? Right. Yeah, yeah we, we mentioned that briefly in the last episode that just got released. So there's some uh, good pictures of that one. Oh, right. It really, it really, with that, with that map, it really shows you the terrain. Like it reminds me of just a little sandy creek bed, which you see like a shallow, tiny creek bed. Except this is like a thousand times bigger. Yes, exactly. Like a so thousand. This, this times. is the kind of uh, you know presentation and map work that you get during the Zoom calls that we're doing. Yes. you know, to orient everybody before the the trip itself. Right. The idea is to make this almost like a uh, a geology class leading up to the you know the field work, um, so that people really have a good understanding of of these processes because that enhances the experience so much if you really understand what you're looking at. Totally. So, I'm telling you guys, it's a trip of a lifetime. You will not be sorry that you made it, and. Uh, I highly suggest it. I mean, I never got one one person that emailed after Colorado and was like, "This fucking sucks." <laughs> <laughs> Randall, you had uh, step to a butte there. You were trying to look for the other day. I didn't know if you want to point that out. That was where we were talking about day two sunset there. Oh, step, yeah, that'll be. That's the overlook of the the rolling Palouse. Here it is, right here. There you go. If it comes in, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna make an excursion to the top of this, and from this. Butte right here, you get a 360 degree view of the whole Palouse, this amazing Palouse countryside, um, and it's a, it's spectacular. What can I say? Definitely. All right, stargazing up there a little bit, maybe. Well, for watching well, the sunset, sunset, we might as well stick yeah. around. Yeah, might as well. And we awesome. do, are we we are going to have D D Dave Matthews on this trip, right? We will have Dave yeah, Matthews, Matthews. With us. <laughs> the cool. the uh, the Star Myth guy will be with so, us. So yeah, we'll we'll be having star lore and star stories, and in being in some just really great country to see the stars. And uh, those those myths of Dave and Matheson's line up with Randall's stuff more than you think. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, absolutely. Well. We flew through this. We ran out of time. I know everyone here would like us to keep going forever, but it is getting late. We're already 15 minutes over what we said we were going to do, so I think uh, this is probably a good a time as any to start wrapping it up. But everyone should plug their stuff because, I mean, the thing is, I mean, none of this, uh, all this stuff is a ton of effort. It's a ton of work. I know the snake bros are all value for value over there. They've got a... They've got a PayPal. I don't know exactly what it is. What is your PayPal? Well, if people just go to brothersoftheserpent.com, they can find our PayPal or Patreon there. Yeah, and then there's a, for Cosmography, if you want to support Randall's work, there's a Patreon for that as well. You know, um, I'll say don't buy any courses at Sacred Geometry to support Randall's work. If you want to support Randall's work, it needs to be through randallcarlson.com. Or yes. ideally through the Cosmography of Patreon, I think is the best way right now. Is mm -hmm. that your ideal mm -hmm. support channel? Okay, so mm -hmm. those are the places. And if you want to support us, grammarica.ca slash support, of course. But those are the things, I mean, for everyone that, that loves to hear Randall talk and, and wants all this stuff to keep going, that's how you keep this stuff going. Because, um, you know, nobody's, none of the drug companies are lining up to give to give us hundreds of thousands of dollars to, to do all this stuff or That's anything right. like that. So the only way we've gotten this far uh, is from your support. So it's important well, let me, that let you me support clarify these guys. There just, to, just to be sure, sorry, Darren, it, it's the Patreon account for Randall is try to make it as simple as possible. Patreon.com slash Randall Carlson. That's right. There so the donations it. can go directly there. There is a, a one-time PayPal option 
and then uh, we are getting to the point. There, there's so much to be added to the to the new website, therandallcarlson.com. Uh, it's just a matter of time of getting it all in there, but we've got so many things, and it's just at a starting point. As much cool stuff is there, and as good as it looks, you know, we're real happy with the, the designers, and uh, you know, we partnered up with them, and there, there's going to be a lot more there. But uh, what I was getting to eventually, we'll have subscriptions where you can, instead of using Patreon, some people don't want to do that. You'll be able to subscribe to things, get special access and uh, perks uh, directly from the rentalcarlson.com site. So that's coming definitely in 2021. Perfect. Yeah. It's important. We got some, some pretty awesome things actually in the pipeline we haven't even talked about yet. Right. Lots of excuse um, to do this again it's a, soon. It's a growing yep. network of really interesting people doing some really incredible work um, that will be, I think, allying with us as we get into 2021. So it's going to be an amazing team that's that's sort of gelling here. And, you know, Brad and I and Russ and Kyle were working with HowTube, yeah. and I think that's going to be a great umbrella. You know, they've signed up um, Mark from After School. He's going to become one of the flagship uh, pod uh, websites. Um, and then we're also going to be doing – uh, joining forces with two seals and a walrus, which is Ben Johnson and Doug, uh, forget his last name. I don't know him personally. I know Ben Johnson now quite well. And, and, um, the, the moderator, Sean, uh, is now going to be, you know, what they're doing, uh, their two seals is because Doug and Ben are, are ex Navy seals. Ben was 11 years, a Navy seal. And he discovered that the best the best uh, remedy for PTSD was the medicinal plants. So he's been working now. Actually, there's a pilot program at Emory University here in in Atlanta. It's sort of on the down low, but not really. I mean, it's just it's not getting any publicity, but it's not a secret. But they're using particularly mushrooms, but other medicinal plants working with people who are having trauma issues, PTSD, that kind of thing. Our, our good friend, Ben Johnson is in the forefront of that. And there's some money resources coming in now to build probably a, the state of the art laboratory in America, um, not far from my back door and uh, up in North Georgia. And he is joining forces with us at HowTube. And uh, going to become the third flagship um, group. So we're going to be getting, I'll be getting back on with those guys in the near future. And we'll be talking more in detail about what's happening there. Um, and that's going to be a real game changer. You know, once once it gets so, you know, I mean, we're talking about licensed use of, you know, medicinal plants. Yeah. They've already they've already legalized it in some of the cities in the states. I mean, some cities yeah. are going on their own too. So that's very positive. Very positive. Yeah. So we're forming some really incredible alliances here um, with some really creative people doing some really outstanding work. And we'll be having, you know, joining them on podcasts. They'll be joining us. Um, we'll be talking to members of the Comet Research Team. We'll be getting uh, Jerome Lessman back on and maybe some of his colleagues to talk about, you know, the great changes, the, the, you know, the drumlins and what the implication of those vast drumlin fields are. So, yeah, interesting stuff, exciting stuff. I can't wait. You want to check all that out. And, of course, if you do want to hang out with all of us uh, crazy assholes in May or in April, all that stuff is available at contact at the cabin.com. That's where uh, the May trip is right now. Randallcarlson.com, Gravarica.ca, Brothers of the Serpent.com. Check all that stuff out. Uh, we hope you guys enjoyed our little swap cast, and we'll have to do more of these. I forgot how fun it was to chat with you, motherfuckers. It's funner when yeah. we're sitting around a table, though. Yeah. 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 We'll be doing that. And It'll thank you, Darren and Graham, you guys, for every for all the work you guys do and for spearheading the trips and everything. You guys are, yeah. are awesome. It has been thanks. great knowing you guys for these last yeah. six years. Yeah, yeah. thanks. Oh, the feeling is sure. more than I've, mutual. I've had a lot of fun with you guys. Yeah, you too. Both up your way down in Colorado and hanging out 
just on uh, Zoom. So we're just right. getting started. Well, we're just getting started. Yep. Yeah. Merry Christmas, motherfuckers. All right. Merry Christmas. All Good right. night, gentlemen. Good night. All right, guys. Next Good week. Bye bye. Ciao. Somehow I built a rocket ship Out of the stuff dreams are made and popsicle sticks Please look at my rocket ship schematics Tell me it can fly to the moon, tell me I'm not a lunatic Hailstorm damage got you blue? Sunburn get you let down? Well, introducing the new Gem Trails. Gem Trails are a convenient new chemtrail that we 
plow through your sky to insure you with the haziest and non-blue sky that you could have. Gem Trails. Choose from our variety of geo-engineered aerosols loaded with toxic chemicals. Some chemicals may include barium, strontium-90, aluminum, cadmium, zinc, viruses of all sorts and varieties, and chafe which actually looks like snow, but may actually be fibers coated with aluminum, desiccated blood cells, plastic, and paper. G -g 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 All chemtrails can be conveniently customized for your needs. Just ask our friend here, James Cruz. Gemtrails. James Cruz ordered the barium, strontium-90, and the chafe. And the chafe he chose was desecrated blood cells in plastic. Gem trails. So I'm sitting in my backyard getting sunburned constantly. And I hear this ad come on the radio. Gem trails. Gem trails. And what they can do for you is amazing. For 33 payments of $333. Gem trails. No more sunburn. Thanks, Gem Trails. Gem Trails. Thanks, Gem Trails. Gem <coughs> Trails. That's right, James. For 33 easy payments of $330, you too can have a hazy sky with zero sun and zero sunburn. Gem Trails. With our brand new technology coming straight out of MIT, we fitted an airplane with nozzles and we can come to any area in the world and spray your backyard. Chemtrails. Warning, warning, warning. Symptoms associated with chemtrails include aneurysms, strokes, heart attacks, and cancer. Chemtrails. Other side effects may include irradiated breast milk, anal leakage, jock itch, runny nose, irregular vaginal discharge, glaucoma, heavy metal poisoning, lockjaw, and low sperm count, persistent hacking, coughing, upper respiratory and intestinal distress, pneumonia, extreme fatigue, disorientation, lethargy, dizziness, splitting headaches, elevated arthritis, symptoms, nosebleeds, blah, 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 blah yada, yada, etc., etc., doctors, blah, 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 uh, death. J -j 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 if you want it, we spray it. So get your gem trails today. Gem Call 1-900-GRAY-SKY. That's 1-900-GRAY-SKY. That's 1-900-W-E-F-U-C-K-E-D. Thanks, gem trails. Gem 